Good morning. This is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God. And today it's raining out because I prayed for rain to come, and it's here. But uh, I would like it to stay for about three hours. But I am teaching from my book, Feed My People Joy. Kingdom Living for End Times. And today I'm going to go over Chapter 2, which is called The Blood Covenant to the Kingdom. And you have to go back to the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, God said, uh, let's make men in our image and let them have dominion over all the earth. And when he said, let's make God in our image, up until that point, what was the image we saw of God? The only image that we saw of God up until that point was God said, let there be light. There was light. God said something, something, and there it was. God said, God, and it was. God said, and he saw. In other words, God was a speaking spirit. God said, and he saw. He produced everything through uh, speaking. So that's the only image that we had of him up to this point. So um, he gave Adam and Eve dominion, Genesis uh, 1, 26, I believe it is, and he said to be fruitful, to, okay, this is what he said, um, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, fill up the earth, and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over every living thing. Um, and then also in, it goes over another place in the Bible. What is man? I believe it's Psalms 8. What is man that you are mindful of him? That you have crowned him with glory and honor and made him to have dominion over all the works of your hand. You see, God created... <laughs> that's my cat. <laughs> God created... I have two dogs and a cat here harassing me. This is why it's easier to broadcast outside. Um, I have authority over you guys. Now you guys chill. Okay, um, thank you. There goes the cat and the dog. Um, <laughs> um, let's see, where was I? Okay, so God gave man um, authority and dominion over all the earth and told them to rule and subdue and have authority over it. And um, told them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And here's a revelation God gave me since the book. The tree was the revelation of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, like when you eat off of a peach tree, you eat a peach. So when you eat fruit from a tree that is the knowledge of good and evil, you experience good and evil. The word knowledge means to experience, not just to know it. So that's why God didn't want him to eat. He didn't want him to experience evil. He would, he would have let them have knowledge of it, but he didn't want him to experience it. The fruit possibly wasn't ripe, it probably possibly wasn't time. That's a thought for thinking. But the knowledge of the the knowledge of good and evil. And so when you eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, you get the knowledge of good and evil. And that's when the curse came on the earth because that was the knowledge of the evil. Satan was the cursor. Satan then became because man had all authority and dominion. Satan came and deceived Adam and Eve and caused them to eat the fruit from that tree, which made Satan their uh, God. Instead of God, they, they disconnected from God, and they connected to Satan, and Satan became their God. So, Satan became ruler over all the earth. Uh, everything man was supposed to have authority over and dominion is what Satan now became, uh, the God of this earth instead of man. Now, because of the covenant... Jesus could bring help to men. But let me explain what the covenant meant. Um, a blood covenant was between two people. Uh, they exchanged each other's strength for what the other was weak in. In other words, if somebody was um, crop growers, and but they were bad warriors, and some other group was excellent warriors, but they had bad ground, they couldn't grow any crops, they would make a blood covenant together. One would supply their protection, and the other would supply their um, their harvest. Okay, so uh, the covenant would give one strength for the other's weaknesses, and this is basically how it worked. Uh, number one, they would exchange weapons. They would, they would make a cov covenant, and they would have a ceremony with each other, and they would exchange weapons which was symbolizing, I give you my strength, now your enemies are my enemies. They would exchange their coats, which was a symbol of their authority. All I have is yours and yours is mine. They would exchange names. And they would cut themselves and intermingle their blood to show their loyalty. Now they were one. Then they would sacrifice an animal, walk through the blood, and stood in the middle of the blood, shouting curses and blessings to each other. I 
I gotta sneeze. <sighs> there it went. Um, each group pronounced blessings and curses to each other. Death that they had promises were broken. Um, and they would even say by what kind of death they would die. Then they ate the covenant meal together, which was bread and wine, which showed their willingness to lay down each other's lives for each other. Now I'm going to go over when it actually happened. Um, the story begins with Abraham and his family. Abraham had a covenant like this. Abraham had a blood covenant with God. Abraham's part of the covenant was to do certain things, which were called Leviticus, Levitical rules. Uh, some of the rules were um, stand up before a gray-haired man, don't tent to your body, don't mix, mix seeds in the field, don't gossip, um, don't have hatred in your heart, don't call the grudge, and no homosexuality. Those are some of the Levitical rules, and there were a lot of Levitical rules. Um, one of the rules in the covenant is of a covenant was whatever your covenant partner did, you had to be willing to do also. And God asked uh, Abraham to do a strange thing. He asked him to sacrifice his firstborn son um, instead of a lamb. And um, Abraham was willing to sacrifice the son because by faith he saw him raised from the dead. Um, but this meant when, if Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son, then that meant that God was um, obligated to sacrifice his son. And now remember, if you broke the covenant law, you were required, um, death was the penalty. Um, Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son, which opened the door for to make a blood covenant with God. But Abraham did not follow the covenant rules, and he was discerning of the death penalty. But God said, don't, uh, I don't want you to die. Instead, take a lamb and sacrifice it in your place. And then later, God replaced Abraham. Um, the Levitical rules with the Ten Commandments, but you still had a sacrifice if you broke just one of those rules. At one point in time, Abraham and Abraham's um, family was under um, the rule of the Egyptian slaves. They became Egyptian slaves, and they were under their rule. And um, the they wanted to sacrifice to God, but the Pharaoh wouldn't let him go. So the certain plagues came on the land. And the last plague was the firstborn child and animal would die at midnight. But in order to protect God's covenant uh, people, his children, who Abraham's family, who he made a covenant with, the Israelites were all included in this covenant. In order to protect his covenant partners, he told them to sacrifice a lamb instead and to smear the lamb's blood on their doorposts. And the death angel, when they saw the lamb, the lamb's blood, which was representative of their covenant, the death angel would pass over their house, and that's what's called Passover. And now if you go forward in the time, this is a love story, and if you go forward in this time, God was now ready to sacrifice his only son, just like uh, Abraham did. And he sent his son Jesus to earth to live. Jesus had to live because Abraham sacrificed his son, it opened the door for God now to sacrifice his son. Because remember, Satan is ruler and authority and has all dominion over all this earth because he stole it from Adam. Now, Jesus wants to have more of an inroad with man. He wants to legally take back everything that he gave to mankind. So God sends his son Jesus as a sacrificial lamb for us. He had to be born of a human because he gave all authority and dominion to human beings. And, but human beings, um, the requirement for their sin was death. So in order to avoid that, Jesus, God sent his son Jesus, born of a virgin Mary, without, no, without man's blood in it, but yet being born a human being, which allowed him to be part of the covenant, through this covenant, to come to earth, but also allowed him to get a man on earth who was sinless because only man had the right and authority because he gave it to him to rule on earth. So Jesus came, Jesus put aside all his godly attributes and lived on earth. And if you have to get my book to get all those scriptures, uh, there's about five of them, um, and then it goes out from there. But he had to live a sinless life. He was God, but he put aside all his godly attributes and lived er on earth as a man, not as God. Everything he did, he did as a man in right relationship with God. He was our example. And 
He was anointed with the Holy Spirit of God. Now, if he was God and operating as God on the earth, it would have been illegal because God gave the authority to man. But if he was God, he wouldn't need the Holy Spirit, which was also God, to be on him to help him to do what he did. So he, he operated as a man on the earth, anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. Okay, He lived a sinless life and he showed us how to live. He, he um, was sacrificed... He was killed. He went to hell to pay the penalty for our price of breaking the covenant for for uh, sinning. And I want you to remember something here. People are not called sinners because they sin. The Bible says that, every, that death and sin came onto earth through one man. And everybody after him was a sinner and was living in death. So people who are not saved are sinners and because they're sinners they sin jesus died paid the price penalty for breaking the covenant three days later he rose from the dead when jesus came to earth he said there's only one law and that is the law of love because if you're following the law of love you won't break any of the ten commandments so first of all easter is when jesus rose from the dead and that celebrated because first it was um uh passover where the, the death angel passed over the houses because of the blood of the covenant was smeared on the doorposts. And then um, Jesus died and three days later he rose from the dead. When he rose from the grave, that's called Easter. And then he rose, he rose from the grave and he sent back the Holy Spirit, that's called Pentecost. He sent back the Holy Spirit to earth to inhabit and live inside everyone who becomes God's child by asking accepting the free gift of Jesus in their heart and he uh, is seated at the right hand of God interceding for us and making making sure through the Holy Spirit that the covenant is enforced that in Galatians 3:29 the Bible says that we are Abraham's seed so we are part of this covenant also are redeemed from the curse the blessings are in 28 1 through 14 and Galatians 3:9 and the curses are in Deuteronomy 28, 15, and 68. And Galatians 3, 13 says that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law so that the blessings of Abraham would come upon us. And the blessings of Abraham are the blessings that are under the covenant. And they are ours. And the blessings under the covenant have to, all in the Old Testament have to do with uh, material wealth, um, prosperity. And it's nothing spiritual because they were not, they, they did not have, they had a dead spirit still because they were not redeemed and the life of Jesus did not come in them. So they had a dead spirit. So everything, all the blessings are material and financial and prosperous. The blessings of Abraham. Now, number one, we exchange names when we got into this covenant. We bear the name of Jesus. Number two, we exchange weapons. Ephesians 6 um, are the whole armor of God. Number three, we exchange coats and authority. And at the name of Jesus, every name, every knee shall bow. We bear the name of Jesus. Um, so today, when we take communion, what we're doing is we're imitating that meal that was made between Abraham and God or any other covenant partner. We're imitating the meal. We're drinking the blood, which is the wine, the, the copy of his, of his blood, and the bread, which is a copy of his, his body. And um, when we do that, we are sealing the deal, so to speak. We are bringing back to remembrance of the sacrifice that Jesus gave and what the blood pa paid for us. And his blood paid for us to have uh, not just salvation, but it restored a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Um, it gave us authority and dominion. It gave us the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. It gave us weapons. It gave us the kingdom of God. It gave us health, prosperity. Uh, it gave us wholeness and power, authority, and dominion to rule. So when we take communion, we want to be remembering the new covenants, covenant and everything the blood of Jesus paid us to do. Because this legally gave God the right to empower us uh, on the earth to have authority, power, and dominion like he gave us in the beginning in the garden. He told us to subdue and have authority and dominion over all the earth. Um, so take a look at my book. That's chapter two, and I didn't go over everything, but I just gave you a little taste of it. If you read my book and you like it, I would like for you to send me an email about what, how it's changed your life and helped you, and I will put that on my website. So my name is Robin Bremer, and you're watching Walks with God.